Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started today talking about some modeling basics, a little bit of subdivision surface uh, modeling techniques. We're going to see how we can make a couch or really a couple different kinds of couches because uh, once you understand how to do this, it's very easy to iterate on it and make a bunch of different versions. So in Cinema 4D, we're going to start by creating a cylinder uh, as I'm going to use this just to help demonstrate kind of what subdivision surface is. Let's also create a cube because we'll want that as well. And we're going to start by taking this cube and putting it into a subdivision surface generator, which we can find right up here. So we need to make it a child of the subdivision surface generator. And what you'll see is we have what almost looks like a sphere. Now it's not quite a sphere, it's close. Uh, and while maybe this can work, depending on exactly how close we're gonna be or, or what else we're gonna be doing with this, um, it is important to, to know that it isn't really 100% a sphere. And you know, I, we can see that if I create a sphere, even scaling it down, it just isn't quite as, as round there. Okay, now I'm also gonna turn on my lines here, change my shading mode so that we can see the number of edges because that's also important when it comes to subdivision surface because subdivision surface is actually going to add geometry for us in knowing how it's going to add geometry and, and how we can work with that uh, to make our lives easier is really what uh, where all the power comes from um, with subdivision surface and why it's so useful. Uh, so in the generator itself, in the object tab, uh, we do have a few different uh, options here. Um, Cap, Cap Mole Clark is kind of the main one in Cinema 4D. Uh, open Subdiv, uh, subdiv uh, can be very useful as it's a little bit more standard across other um, 3D applications. So if you are going to be taking a model, say from Cinema 4D over to Blender or Maya or 3D Studio Max, um, Open Subdiv um, is, I believe it's in all of those uh, different packages. Okay. We also have two different controls here for the number of subdivisions we're going to get, one for our perspective view and one for our render view. Uh, and this can be very helpful because you can have two different values here. You can keep your uh, perspective view uh, setting much lower uh, so you don't slow things down and then have things higher when it comes time to render. So you can see if I turn this down, we go back to um, one subdivision. If we go to zero, we have our uh, cube back. If I go up to three, it's gonna add even more. And we could keep going higher with this. Now we do need to be careful with how high we go uh, as this is a very easy way to crash Cinema 4D and other 3D applications as well. Um, if you accidentally turn this number too high on objects that already have a lot of polygons. Okay, so we end up with something that looks like a sphere. All right, uh, but really, if we want something to be round, it needs to have eight sides instead of the four like our cube. And I'll just demonstrate that here with this cylinder. I can make it a child of the subdivision surface um, generator as well, although it will only work on the top object here. So if I was to turn the uh, subdivisions back up, um, you'll see it's only going to be working on the cylinder. It's not working on the cube. An easy way around that is just to group these in a null and then it'll work on um, everything inside that null. So what I wanted to show you is if we set the rotation segments to four here, okay, this is kind of like what we have with our cube, right? If I turn this off, we can see it's kind of a cube and we get something that once again is almost a, a perfect circle, but not quite. If in my rotation segments in my cylinder here, I start increasing this, we'll see that it's gonna get more and more round. And really eight is kind of the standard here. Um, six is pretty close as well, okay? Honestly, it just comes down to how accurate we need something to be, how circular, how round. Um, you know, if polygon counts are a concern, not a big deal if we go with six or maybe even four, um, you know, segments, uh, if we, if we can get away with it. Okay. So that's what I wanted to show you guys with the cylinder, uh, with the cube. Let's see what happens when I start adding segments here. So I made the cube editable. I'm going to go into edge mode. Really. I can do this in any, um, 
sub-object mode, point, edge, or polygon, and we're gonna add some loops. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna choose loop path cut. Okay, and now you can see my low poly cage around my subdivided um, geometry. And I'm gonna place one edge loop around the very top. Okay, notice now how it's holding its shape a lot better vertically, especially towards the, uh, the top of the cube here. If I had another set of edges towards the bottom, you can see now it's holding its shape much more vertically as well, especially towards the bottom of this object. And if I end up repeating this, coming in here, maybe doing the same along the z-axis, one right there, you can see it's starting to hold its shape a little bit better. Do one that part of the z-axis on our cube, we can see there. It's looking good, and now it's just time for the x-axis. Okay, so that'll be right here and right here, okay? If I get out of this, maybe even turn off um, the lines right now, switch to shading, you'll see we have created a cube that has you know, bevels, fillets. So nothing too crazy here yet, but the important thing to know and kind of take a look at is what we did to each corner. There is now an edge, edge loop even, um around this corner so there's one on this side on this side as well as vertically so that's what it's allowing this to hold its shape and you'll notice it's really only curving until it help it hits that helper edge uh we added so it's only going to curve this much okay in essentially each direction all right so now we can create a couch. I'm going to start by creating another cube. cube. Okay, I don't even need to put this in the subdivision surface um, at this point. I'm going to make it editable. We'll just start by just kind of scaling it, kind of give me the bottom of my couch. So this is kind of the base. I'm then going to go in and add some edge loops, just like I was doing before, but these are going to be for the armrests of the couch. So I'll do one, and I'm just gonna add a second cut there. Those are gonna be equally spaced. And while I could come in here and move each of these over, uh, I find it just a little bit easier to go into rectangle selection, select my edge loops, and then scale them out. So that's about where my armrests are gonna be. I'll then come in with loop path cut again. This is where the back of the couch will be. Okay, and with that, I can now start extruding. I'm gonna select just these back polygons here, so something like that. I'm then gonna extrude these up, and this is for the height of the arms, so maybe something like that. I'm gonna, let's see, deselect the arms now. So I just have the back. I'll extrude that up now as well. So we have our basic couch shape. And believe it or not, that is almost it for our couch here. Uh, I can put it into my subdivision surface generator. I can turn it on. And you'll see we get uh, something that maybe looks a little bit more comfortable, but still looks a little bit off. And just like with the cube we did uh, previously, now we need to add those helper edges. And so I find it helpful to just add these edges along an entire axis at once. So we'll go across the Z axis, then maybe the X, uh, and then finally the Y. And the way I'm gonna approach this is by just looking for every kind of corner and adding a helper edge. So there's a corner here, helper edge. And I'm not doing this quite as um, accurately as, as I could. Uh, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Uh, but the same technique I used, selecting both edge loops and scaling them outwards uh, that I did for the arms previously would be how I would go about making sure these are, um, you know, exactly the same distance apart. So here's my next corner, helper edge right there. I have another corner right here. It's actually that same corner, right? Just a little bit lower. 
So I'm going to need a helper edge right there. And you can see as I'm doing this, we're starting to hold our shape a little bit better. And then I just repeat that process. So maybe something like right there, right there, and finally there. So that'll do it for the Z. Now I can do the X, same thing. Have my corner right here. So that's where I'm gonna want my helper edge. And really, if I'm trying to kind of make this look even, I want this little shape right here. Let me turn off this, this polygon right here, and really all the polygons around a corner to be a square. Okay, I don't want any kind of weird rectangles. Um, I want this to be as close to a square as possible. Uh, if I want the, the, the curve uh, generated from the subdivision surface to be the same all over this couch. And while that may not always be the case on every single couch, um, that's what I am going for uh, here with this one. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I need to continue along the X axis. Back to loop path cut. Here's another corner. So I need an edge on this side of it, as well as this side. Lastly, this side. And once again, trying to make these all squares, doing an okay job overall, not perfect, but whatever. Lastly, Y axis, and I can turn subdivision surface on so we can kind of see it all come together because it's starting to look pretty good. So maybe one right there, that corner, the top. I have another corner right here. Below that corner. And then the bottom here. And there we go. Okay. So it's always a good idea to just double check our corners to see if we missed anything. I don't think I did. No, looking pretty good. And so if I'm still getting any weird places like right here, maybe we can just go in and bump up the number of subdivisions um, in our editor as well as our render. And usually that will help, although it also might mean I missed one. And it looks like I did. I missed a couple on the y-axis actually. So right here and right there, around right there. Much better. Okay. So I was noticing that the curve here was much larger than really anywhere else. Uh, and so I needed to do something about it. So that's the basics of the couch. Uh, let's say I wanted to do uh, a cushion. Right, so I'm gonna create another cube. And just try and kind of get it close to a third. If I really wanted to, to be precise, maybe I'd use a cloner, but I'm really more concerned with just kind of the, the process here than I am making a complete perfect couch. So maybe something like that. It actually looks like it might be, will it fit? Uh, not quite. All right, maybe we'll do it at the end. So we have our, our cube here. I'm going to put it in a, another subdivision surface. All right, always a good idea to name. So I'll call this couch. Call this cushion uh, one. And you can see we have kind of a pancake looking thing. That's not going to work. Uh, and so with just this cube here, it's really just about the helper edges. Once again, we're going to do a little bit of uh, modifying this after, but mostly helper edges. So for the cushion, I'm going to want the cushion to be a little bit rounder, a little bit softer. And so I'm going to place those helper edges a little bit further away from the corners here. So maybe something like that, something like that. And because I really don't have enough space to do two here, I mean, I guess maybe I do, I can just do one in the middle there. So I took care of that corner. So I'm also gonna do this one and then these back. And I think that is it. So we can already see how that looks softer. Uh, what I can do now to make this even um, better 
is go into polygon selection. I'm going to select just this top polygon and I can pull this up and that's going to give this a little bit more of a curve, make it look even softer, more plush, uh, more comfortable to sit on. Okay. So there is my cushion. And like I said, if I really wanted to, um, you know, get this to work, I would probably, uh, use a cloner. So create a cloner, drag it in there. Don't want the grid array. So I'll just do linear, uh, and rather than on the Y, we'll have this go out. It looks like it's the Z kind of a weird axis to have done this on, but something like that, we can see just about, just about made it work. So honestly, probably just change the size of my couch to make it fit. Okay. And that's uh, super easy to do um, because all I have to do is grab all the edges on one side. So if I'm looking at this without a subdivision surface turned on, all I have to do is grab a single side here and just move it. Now, I would highly recommend having subdivision surface turned on when you adjust this so you can make sure we get it as best we can. And maybe a little something like that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I could even make the top cushions from here. So if we call these bottom cushions, call these top. Okay, and we can rotate them. Maybe something like that. Clearly gonna have to do something with the size here a little bit. So those look way too tall, maybe something like that. And back into uh, my top cushion, select the cube. And what's great about working with the cloner here is I'm only gonna have to fix one and it's gonna fix all of them. Oh, a little bit of a mouse freak out there. So move this down. And if I really wanted to maybe move it a little bit forward again, and I'm toggling here between uh, the world and object axis so that my handles get our little, uh, are oriented more towards my liking. So world is always gonna be Y up, you know, X and Z, whereas local can be based on if that object has been rotated. Uh, so that's looking good. You know, once again, I can always come back and adjust this, maybe the, Rotation is still too much. I would want it close to the same height as the top. So maybe something like that. Once again, if I want to lower this, super easy. So I can just go into point mode. And it's just all about selecting those top points, keeping all those edges oops, selected. Subdivision surface back on. And maybe we'll do something like that. These cushions just need to be a little bit more forward so they're not intersecting. Great. So that's kind of the basics of working with subdivision surfaces on uh, modeling a, a quick couch. And as I mentioned, it's super easy to iterate on this. Um, so if this is my couch, and I really wanted to, if I wanted to change kind of the shape of anything here, maybe come into front view, select like say the points for the armrest, should just be these guys here. Just got the other armrest. And you can always move them out, move it in. You know, really you can do um, whatever you want. So if I move it in like this, okay, you know, kind of cool. Uh, I could maybe even round out that top a little bit more by selecting these two um, edge loops at the, the top. So coming in here, selecting maybe all these, moving them up a little. All right, now we have something that actually has more curve, nice and round. Everything's still looking good. Uh, and you can do this all day, making different couches, different cu uh, cushions. Um, and if you really wanna get crazy with the cushions, uh, you could always bring them in 
um, and sculpt them to, to add more detail, more wrinkles, things like that. But that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for the next one.